Shakul. I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new course on C programming. So here, I am going to start from absolute basics. Make you do your first program, displaying your first message on the screen, hello world or whatever you want to. We will play with the printf syntax so that you know how to display not just simple messages, but format them. Printf means formatted print command. There are various ways of formatting. You can have a tab space, you can have a backspace, you can go all the way to the beginning of the line, you can skip to the next line. There are so many things you can do just by printf. Why do you need to know them? So that you can present beautiful outputs. Look at the output on the screen. Uh, a, most people have a lot of clutter on their output. So I'll show you how to get rid of that clutter. B, uh, the better your output is, the more attractive your program looks. Yes, of course, coding, coding happens from inside, but you may do the best of the codings as long as your user interface at the end is not good. Nobody looks at your code. So presenting the outputs professionally means having a good control over printf and knowing all the nuances of that. So that's going to be our first step. Then comes to scanf. I'll show you how to read integers, variables, characters, floating point numbers, etc. So this is going to be your basic part. Then we'll go on to decision making, if statement, if else, switch case, uh, various programs. So everything I'm going to teach you will be associated with a program, with, with a question which is related to the real world. You, you would have seen some of the other subject of mine, some of the other videos of mine. You know, I never speak anything unless it's relevant to the real world. No point in learning something if you don't know how to use it. So yes, everything that I'll teach you will be with a program. I won't teach you, okay, this is how you do if, that's about it. It'll be a part of a program. In fact, something like if will be there a part of many, many programs. And it will be a program related to the real world. We take situations like calculating minimum, maximum, sorting a series of numbers, finding simple interest, finding compound interest, finding area of a circle, Fibonacci series, prime numbers. These are also questions which are asked in the university. So whether you're preparing from university point of view or you're preparing for the sake of learning programming. Now this is something I want to get into. I've been in this field since 22 years. I have mainly dealt with students of second year, third year and fourth year. Programming is introduced in the first year and I've seen students during first year, they tend to skip, avoid, dodge programming. They do very well with the theory subjects, but programming, you know how it is. It's not like everybody does. There are those eight students in the class who actually write programs. But I'm talking about the other 40, 45 people who simply copy the program from their favorite uh, good student. Don't be there. You can't be there all your life. What happens when you go for your interview? What happens when you go for placements? Yeah, back in the day, there were situations where you could get a job without doing programming. Now it's practically impossible. Most of the companies that will come to your college will have something or the other to do with tech because that's how the world is. Look around you. Pause the video. First of all, the video that you're seeing is because of technology, but pause that. That is straightforward. That is easy to understand. Look at your fridge, TV, AC, remote control, your Amazon Fire Stick or whatever. Look at all of those components. Any company you join will be related to technology and will be related to the internet, which means coding will be a part of your job. Don't be the student who right, reaches right at the end of the cliff and then decides, oh my God, if I don't do coding now, I'm going to die. Because it's not like you're not going to learn coding that time. You will, but there'll be so many others so far ahead of you. You will be joining the back end of the group and powering yourself through ahead. All of that is going to waste a lot of your valuable years of your career. So don't reach that stage and then realize now, this is the time. Get on with it. I'm going to hold your hand and make you write code. I'm serious when I'm saying this. All right. It's not going to be that, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. And you are just wondering what's going on. That's not going to happen. I've seen, I've seen many uh, videos on coding of various languages. Some of them are just too basic. Some of them go way too advanced where it's more than teaching the student. It's about telling what the teacher knows. Yes, it's not that people don't watch them. Of course, everybody watches all of that. People watch uh, videos of food being cooked on the street, but that doesn't mean you want to cook it. You just watch it for the awe of it. So that's what happens. Instead of learning, students are just amazed. Oh my God, yeah, that teacher, he or she is doing this. But it's got so far ahead of the student, 
that the catch up it doesn't happen so that's not going to happen i'll take absolute care with every video to show you the exact working of everything that i'm teaching and i would expect you i would expect first of all to you to understand it so well that immediately as you shut the video you write the program by yourself i would want to see your outputs beautifully created outputs uh We'll start from basics, but the course is not only for basics. We want to go very advanced. Take a look at all the programs that we're going to do. Some of them, I'm going to show you the demo right now. All of them cannot be put in one single video. Then it just become too complicated for you to understand. So we'll start with basics, basics of printf, work with integers, accept values from the user. You know, when students in their first year see the syntax of printf, and especially of scanf, when they see that percentage, when they see that ampersand, if no one tells them, what is the use of these? They're all very useful. They're printf and scanf are called formatted print and formatted scan. So there is a particular way in which they are written so that you get formatted inputs and outputs. You just have to understand what they do. Play with printf and scanf for a few programs till the time you're so comfortable that in the middle of sleep also if I wake you up and I tell you I want to accept three integers or three floating point numbers, you should be able to give the statement. Once you're comfortable with these two, you know how to work with values. Then comes your logic building. We'll do umpteen programs which have if, if else, if else, if else, complicated if statements where multiple statements are put together, switch case structures, menu driven programs where uh, you accept two numbers from the user, ask the user what he or she wants to do. Maybe add, add, maybe subtract, multiply, divide, or just simply end the program. When you accept the input from the user, you apply a switch case and understand what the user has typed. And based on that, you do the corresponding operation. So you'll be doing that, those. Once you know one program like that, you can do so many. You can create your own questions. I'm going to do a program for add, subtract, multiply, divide as an example. You can do programs for some other kind of operations. Run your program, see the result. The joy that you get when your program gives you the correct result. There is nothing that explains it. A, it is very satisfying. B, at the same time, it is self-motivating. It's a fire that ignites itself. Automatically, you'll get the push. Once you get one correct program, you'll get the push to the next one by yourself. Change the situation, make it better and get on with it. So this is going to be your first step. Then we will go into arrays. Now what are arrays? A bunch of numbers put together. When, when you work with arrays, you work with a series of numbers. So what are the possible programs? Unlimited. Sorting a series, finding the highest, finding the sum, finding the average, etc, etc. Again, there are so many possibilities that you can do with it. Then we will see palindrome. Palindrome in characters, palindrome in numbers. Where you enter a number, you know what's a palindrome. Forward, backward, should be the same. It's a typical exam question. Then we'll get into loops. When you do looping, you can again do a bunch of programs with it. Uh, star pattern generations, very popular. Most universities, not just universities, gate exams have those questions where they give you some pattern, they ask you to generate it. You can't do that without using a loop. So we'll be doing looping related programs, single loop, nested loops, and so on. In loops, there are various types. For loop, while loop, do while. Everybody's favorite is for. But there are situations where for is just not going to work. Then it's either while or do while that you have to use. What, what is the situation? How is it relevant in the real world? With examples, we'll be seeing. Then we'll go even deeper. We'll create functions. We'll pass parameters to functions. When you pass parameters, it can be by raw value or it can be the more professional way, by reference. I'll show you both with examples, pros and cons of each. Then we'll go even bigger, we'll make structures which are better than arrays. The difference in arrays, all the data types, all the elements are the same data types. Structures, you can have a bunch. You can have some character string, you can have an integer, you can have a float, you can have put, put all of them together like an employee. If you make an employee database, the examples I'm going to take are will, be, will all be from real world and from my own experiences. My final year project was in BARC. And my project was Provident Fund System. I've been learning programming since my school days. My project was in COBOL and that was the first language that I learned. So I'm going to draw a reference from my own experiences. My first job was in a company called Infoban where we did internet banking. Way back in the year 2000 when banking, internet banking was introduced in India. So we were writing those initial codes. Anyway, so a lot of examples that I take will be related to banking also. This gives you an insight with real world examples as to how your program, a single line of change in your program makes such a big difference in the real world. Anyway, 
So you make structures, we'll work with pointers. Combining pointers and structures, you create nodes. Combining those nodes, you create a linked list. That's where we will stop. This is the whole summary of the course. I will do my best to make you understand and keep you with me right till the end. Right till the end. Like I said, it's going to be a lot of hand-holding. At no point will the pace of the lectures or the course will be overwhelming. Each video by itself will be self-understood as an independent entity. And the whole chain of videos, when you watch in entirety, it will give you the confidence to call yourself a programmer. Tomorrow you have your job interview, you know how to answer those questions. Yes, is one course going to make you the best programmer in the world? No, I'm not here to lie. No teacher can make a programmer the best programmer in the world. Only you can do that to yourself. Yes, I will teach you. I will teach you how to write programs. First of all, I'll get that fear out of your mind where you stuck, you kept thinking, is it so tough? Should I try? Should I try? Probably I'll try next question. Probably I'll try the next assignment. Probably I'll try the next semester. That next next is not going to happen. This is when you will learn programming. And my end goal is to make you capable of being called a programmer. From there, how good you get is up to you. How many hours you spend in front of the computer is up to you. But again, I will do the best, my best to motivate you to spend those hours so that you write those codes okay now without further ado the course has already been released on my uh, website videos will keep getting published uh, every second third day don't wait for all the videos to come together because again then look like a big mountain to climb as and when videos are released practice them by yourself and uh, show me the results share your results on your own social media tag me let me see your program let me see what you've been doing you know if you be my student any other subject you know you always can get in touch with me on whatsapp that's my whatsapp number the course will be available on my website bharatacharyeducation.com hope to see you there wish you all the best do it